Unthinkable is a movie that will get you to think about topics that are extremely controversial. The movie is great at getting you to say one of those cliched, you know, if that were me, statements. But it's a movie that should also make you think. If you've paid any attention at all to the war in the Middle East over the last 15 plus years, you would have heard about the controversial interrogation methods that were used to extract information from prisoners. A large amount of people view those methods as torture, while others view it as a necessary part of war. Many of those interrogations led to successful missions, but also brought about many questions of legality and morality. Unthinkable is a movie about three different people with three very different points of view. Each one of those points of view has their own rights and wrongs. And each of those three different people have their own beliefs on what needs to be done in order to gain what they need. You are immediately thrust into a worst case scenario. A prior Delta Force operator, formerly known as Steven Younger, now known as Yusuf since he has converted to Islam, has made a video in which he shows three nuclear bombs that he has placed in three different American cities that he says will detonate unless his demands are met. His time as an operator working with explosives and being highly skilled with those explosives is what makes this threat very, very credible. His experience in the Middle East have led him to becoming a Muslim. He has seen the carnage and death, and he believes that this is the way to make it all stop. His beliefs are the beliefs of many that the American forces are not the heroes, but actually the villains to the people in the Middle East. And he expresses that throughout the film. Yusuf demands that the armed forces pull out of the Middle East and that no more puppet regimes or governments be put in place in the Middle East as well. During some of the interrogation scenes, you will actually almost begin to feel sorry for him. He has a wife and kids, and he claims that he just wants there to be peace for his people. However, Yusuf will prey on that throughout the film as a way for him to garner sympathy, and even use that as a way to get breaks from the interrogation, from the torture. His prior military experience gives him a bit of an advantage in resisting the army's interrogation methods. That is, until he encounters Henry Harold Humphreys, a.k.a. H. H. also has a prior military experience and a background in black ops interrogations. He's a man that has seen a great many things and has been successful at getting information out of those who have it. It's in meeting H. that you should begin thinking about what could or should be done during an interrogation in order to get the necessary information. Right away, H asks Yusuf about the location of the bombs, and Yusuf refuses to answer. So what does H do? He chops off one of Yusuf's fingers. Again, can you really blame H in this scenario? Millions of lives are on the line, and right after he chops the finger off, he says, it's only a finger. H understands the bigger picture of this scenario. He is of the mindset that all is fair in war. He even calls the others selfish as they disagree with his methods and argue with him constantly and plead with him to stop. He knows his methods will work and that it's only a matter of time before Yusuf breaks. He states that there is one thing that will make any person break and all he needs to do is find it. Needless to say, it takes H a while to find what will make Yusuf break due to his incredible threshold for pain and suffering. But in the end, H finds that breaking point and due to his actions, you are led to believe that H will stop at nothing. He will do the unthinkable. H's actions to get the information from Yusuf are shown to anger and disgust those within the room in which the interrogation is being held in. And yet, they show compassion for Yusuf, who is threatening to detonate three nuclear bombs. In H's mind, he was there. He was called to do the dirty work. He's there to do the dirty work. He's there to do what no one else will and what no one else can do. Yet, he's made out to be the villain. He's trying to save the day, and constantly he is made out to be the monster and the villain instead of the person who has planted these nuclear bombs. 
Now to counteract H's extreme methods of information gathering, we are given Agent Brody, who works for the FBI's counterterrorism team and is played by Carrie Ann Moss. She is there to play the role of legality and morality. Each time H inflicts a vicious injury upon Yusuf, she is there to question and argue those methods with both a legal and moral sense. She represents the belief that we as Americans are above using torture as a means to an end. Constantly through the film, Brody is there to question H's methods and bring into light the legality and morality of those methods. You will begin to dislike her because of our instinct to say, how could you care about such, such a thing like the law at a time like this when someone's threatening to detonate three nuclear bombs? Agent Brody is basically the good cop to H's bad cop. She tries to calmly reason with Yusuf by asking him to think of his family and what they're going through as a way to maybe have him give up the locations of the bombs. She too is highly intelligent and highly dedicated to her profession. H proves this while he's reading a profile about Agent Brody. He even mentions to her that she has no boyfriends, no husband, no kids. Throughout the film you can see her struggling to find a reasonable way to figure out how to extract the information from Yusuf without the use of violence. H uses this to his advantage. He repeatedly has her come in and try to put some of Yusuf's pain at ease and be the person that Yusuf can trust and confide information to. She is continually made to be the voice of reason and even lets that compassion get the best of her. Yusuf tries to get her to believe that there are no bombs, but while she claims that she didn't believe him, after a non-nuclear bomb that Yusuf planted in a shopping mall explodes and kills 53 people, she is seen screaming at Yusuf, and you can hear it in her voice that she wanted to believe him that there were no bombs. As time ticks away and days turn into hours left before the bombs are set to detonate, you can see Brody begin to fall into desperation. H tells her, hey, if you want me to stop, I'll stop. And when he looks at her, she quietly looks away as if finally giving in to the by any means necessary attitude that H possesses. Brody does remain objective to H's methods, but she knows time is running out. However, she and no one else is prepared for what H has in store for when Yusuf's family is brought into the mix. Towards the end of the film, you are shown one of the reasons why this movie is entitled Unthinkable. H finally has exhausted all his usual methods of pain and torture and finds the one thing that really no man can withstand seeing, and that is watching his family be hurt. I won't go into too much detail, but H has shown he will not hesitate to do what he feels he needs to do, and that ultimately leads Yusuf into breaking down just like H said that he would. I believe the movie is entitled Unthinkable because you are shown what someone will do when they feel they are given no other choice. Which someone is that? You have Yusuf, who feels that his country is doing more harm than good in the Middle East and goes about planting those nuclear bombs all across America. H is a hardened, experienced interrogator who will stop at nothing to get his information. He is shown to be ruthless, but on the flip side, he is extremely kind to his wife and his kids, and is seemingly a normal family man. Each time you see H torture Yusuf, you will think that he can't go any further, and each time H will show you that he's willing to do whatever he feels necessary, the unthinkable. Then there's Agent Brody. How can someone be so calm and compassionate towards someone who's threatening to murder hundreds of thousands of people, and yet get extremely angered towards the person who's trying to help? save those same people. All three of the characters are in one way or another arguably doing the unthinkable. I just want to say I was able to connect with this with this movie on so many different ways. Uh, I was in the army a long time ago and I actually spent uh, a year in Afghanistan and I got to see what people are capable of doing to one another. I've also met a few people who decided to convert to Islam and one of them did so while we were on that deployment in Afghanistan. And with my time with a particular three-letter government agency and the time I spent, you know, deployed, uh, I was able to understand this movie on a whole different level. 
Unthinkable made me think about the scenario that the movie presents and had me thinking what I'd do if it were me uh, in the character's shoes. So I want to take this time out to say thanks to all of our new subscribers. You guys have just blown uh, myself and Joseph away with, with all of the support. Uh, without you, you know, we couldn't, none of this is possible. And we just want to give a deep, heartfelt thank you. We here at Same Differences, you know, we appreciate everything. And if you have suggestions or movies that you'd like to see us do a deep dive into, please just let us know down in the comments. And as always, likes, subs comments. It's all appreciated. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.